became a cartoonist, writer, movie maker, and now host of his own web show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Rick Van Dyke Show. When I was eight or nine years old, my dad came home from a business trip with a book, and this was it. Now, I didn't think much of it at the time, but on May 24th, 1977, my birthday, my parents took me to the movies. And from the moment the yellow letters filled the screen, my life was changed forever. Star Wars showed me that with enough creativity, ingenuity, and vision, anything was possible. Hello, greetings and salutations. I'm Rick Van Dyke, and this is my show. I'm here with my special guests. Greg Conan. <laughs> Dirk Van Orforst. Chris Hampel. <laughs> Jeff. All right, super. All right, so first... Uh, I pulled my last <laughs> <laughs> Real crafty. Like well done. <laughs> All right, first topic. Star Wars. It's on everybody's mind. The trailers, the teasers, I guess, broke the internet, or as they say... <laughs> um, broke it real good. <laughs> yeah. Now, how, does, how, how do we all feel about, about the, the direction that it's going, uh, that Disney is now... Uh, has ownership, and uh, and we're now looking at a Disneyfied version. Do you think that uh, we're going to see something that's more sanitized, no. or something no. that's truer to the original, less no. fantasy? Yeah. Yes, true, true. I don't think it'll be true to the original at all. Sure, he was it'll a fan. Updated. He was a fanboy, just he like. Was also, yeah, but if he does what he did to Star Trek to it, he'll make it better than the original. Yeah, you have to remember Disney. That's that's debatable, right? I mean, it depends. On no, no, it's true. It's oh, scientifically it's proven. I am a Star Trek fan. It's been scientifically <laughs> proven in laboratories that that new movie was better than like any of the last four Star Trek. I don't think Disney even factors into it whatsoever. Oh, really? No. You don't think they want your money? I don't think Disney. <laughs> they look already at, look have at the first it. six yeah. movies. They were family movies, anyways. They were kid movies, or especially the the last three, the prequels. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it was Disney or whoever. Yeah, but I wouldn't really consider the originals to be kids movies. That nope. would be a mistake. Because I was movies. a kid when I loved those movies. You know, yeah. times I watched those, and, and those they appealed the uh, toys uh, beyond the you know the the scope of. Yeah, but they were kids' right. movies that everyone enjoyed. They brought out the child in all of us. But I they did. Guess, they were based true. on it. That, that those were not like you know terms of endearment. The that's Star true, Wars was true. not like. No, it was entertaining. It was escape. It, like it was the first yeah, blockbusters, exactly. really. Well, besides Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. yeah. All right. So when you when you first saw the teaser, <laughs> what was your first thought? <laughs> the original teaser? No, the teaser now of. Well, okay. Let's oh. let's let's take teaser one and teaser two for Star Wars Episode okay. Seven, and just consider it as one trailer. All right. <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> Good. You? No, right. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good trailer. It was well constructed. It was exciting. It paid like it, it showed you little bits. You want to see more. It's not like oh, I can tell this movie's gonna blow because of the trailer. Right. But like I mean, for myself, the, my only trepidation was sort of like the cutesy robot kind of thing, right? The little. But I, I don't know. well, two of the major the characters fact that in the, the robot is real. That's true. Is, uh, something that at least it's like okay, maybe. That's true. Like you know the cutesy robot thing. The entire mm -hmm. first 20 minutes of the original Star Wars movie is cutesy robot. True enough. Yeah, yeah. True. No, they're really cutesy about that, though. They were what are you talking about? R2-D2? Was there anything cute about R2-D2? Yeah. It was yeah, something different so. is what it was. Yeah. Well, it was different, but it was cutesy. How many kids was that? If that was a tall guy in a midget. There was never any kid's favorite character. R2, yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of kids yeah. who that was their favorite character. Han, Luke, Chewie, Maybe. Darth. Well, that's, yeah, but there were lots of kids who loved Leia those robots. Fear. Girls didn't watch the original Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, well, you find that out later on. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I kept in, <coughs> in the back of my mind was I remember videotaping uh, on Entertainment Tonight, the Phantom, Phantom Menace. Menace, at the house on Center Street. Yeah. And taking it to HMV on Sunday before work or at, during work, and we put it in, and the whole store stopped. And just stare. Well, the trailer for Phantom Menace was pretty awesome too. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 everyone was talking about how Obi Wan like did this, and yeah, the droids yeah. flew back. So, so in the back of my head, it was like, <laughs> keep that in mind. 
But the teaser too, it was like still it was like when the you know the fighters came down the yeah. X wings, it was like oh, but then the hand and Chewie at the end just was like, yes. Well, and the that. fact that well again, J.J. Abrams, he's made some pretty damn those last two Star Trek movies. Those are fantastic. Those are excellent well, movies, and I like Star Trek. Regardless like of Star Trek or not, they were they were good movies. They're they right. stand on their own. I never saw uh, what was his last one? This not District. Uh, Cloverfield, not Cloverfield. He did Cloverfield, but there was also the one with the kids at the train. And the oh, Super, Super 8. 8. Super 8. Super 8 was pretty good. I never I seen Super that. 8. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Super 8 was good. It really felt like a Spielberg. You know, yeah, it did, not actually. Goonies. The guy knows how to make a movie. He knows how to... That guy knows, knows how to make him some movie. That's right. Well, <laughs> if those trailers are in any indication of what he did with Star Trek, that franchise, because that was a languishing fa- franchise, so was oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Star, Star Wars. Star Wars. God damn it, those Star Wars. Wars movies. Those last three are bullshit. You guys are so hard on those prequels. They're not the worst thing in the world. They're, well, they're there's the worst terrible thing. things about them. But they... <laughs> you, were, you, you They don't... <laughs> They're I know what child soldiers. Yeah. It's oh, like if you not. if you were a big fan of sandwich toast, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I am. I actually have peanut fan. butter, crunchy peanut butter today with fucking blueberry jam. The next day, raspberry jam with some smooth peanut butter, or and then the next day I'm gonna have just buttered toast. No, no, that's that's, <laughs> that's the same Here's, thing. No, this, no, you know this know would what? be the same thing. The if you had a lunch lady, were or a babysitter. If you had a babysitter, if you had a babysitter when yeah. you were a little kid, you want to like it, but you can't. And she made you peanut butter and jam sandwiches and you only got to have three because then that babysitter went away and then you're like those are the best peanut butter and jam sandwiches and then you and your friends had peanut butter and jam sandwich conventions and sat around like this talking about how great those peanut butter and jam sandwiches were when you were a little kid and then all of a sudden that same babysitter comes back one day makes you a peanut butter and jam sandwich it wouldn't matter if that peanut butter and jam sandwich was made with the best bread peanut butter and jam in the world Mm -hmm. no matter what and I'm not saying that they were the best peanut butter and jam sandwiches ever those prequels but they weren't as bad as everyone says and you bit in you'd be like this is shit this this is nothing (laughs) compared to when I was a kid you betrayed me babysitter (laughs) who made me peanut butter and jam sandwiches you screwed up because you're looking at it when you're a little kid, rose-colored glasses. I saw Phantom Menace when they re-released it, what was that, three years ago? So, that, I walked out of three movies in my life. One was the Batman. Batman, that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they made sure Batman, uh, the one with, what's oh, the, was it Val Kilmer? Batman no, the George, George Clooney. Clooney. George Clooney. George Clooney. Yeah, that was yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, seen the Clooney. I walked nice out. Nice to meet you. Bro. I ended up sitting for the last half of that movie in the parking lot smoking cigarettes while you guys finished that movie. <laughs> we were I sat on a cigarettes curb and smoked cigarettes. <laughs> I remember that. He literally yeah. like mumbled something like, Jesus. I'm thinking he got out. And he walked out. Yeah. I had to leave uh, we James Bond Tomorrow Never Dies because I had to work. And I forgot my schedule at the time, so I was like, oh shit, I gotta go to work. We're in the Market Mall. We're <laughs> the market mall. So I had to leave. And that movie, The Phantom Mess. If I, any of those three, the, the original three, episode four, five, six, I would stay in there again and watch those movies in the theater, even if it was not a re release 3D or anything. Yeah. But that uh, just f- kept finding excuses to go outside and smoke cigarettes. <laughs> hmm. I think maybe you're a little hard on it. It's not well, a great movie. It's Phantom terrible. Menace, it's not terrible. See, it's in terms terrible. of endearment, is terrible. I've heard, no, there's... Uh, yeah. So you're well, saying terms well, of endearment is remember, better than Phantom Menace, yes. Do you remember... Hold on. Oh, okay. Okay. Hold on. This is important. <laughs> <endearment>. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> the the world 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 you just said. <laughs> terms of endearment was better than the Phantom Menace. That's an outrageous statement. Well, Jack Nicholson. Castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet on the Rick Van Dyke show, don't come alone. Ready to go. Um, the costumes are virtually completed. Uh, just some aging and whatnot. Um, the props are, for the most part, completed. Uh, we have all the weapons um, and the majority of the cast in place. We've already started rehearsals, and um, yeah, we just need the, the additional funds to be able to get this project completed. <laughs>